I've added a waiting room. Anyway, after you legalize it, you still have to treat people fairly. That's the key, right? Right. But anyway, so while, while Kevin's getting set up, I'll introduce the show. We'll move this along quite efficiently. I've got a waiting room. And I don't think we'll get bugged out again, but we're going to discuss uh, several different phases of marijuana. And uh, uh, no, Ann, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, hell to the no. Uh, so the different phases we're going to talk about tonight are number one. Uh, we're, the particular discussion is how our voices are not being heard and why can't our voices be heard? And so John Novak's going to lead off because he's one of the stalwarts in the industry. Um, he has a site called 420 Leaks. That's 420-L-E-A-K-S. And I remember when I moved here about a decade ago, it was prominent. Things were going good. I saw his stuff all the time. Didn't know him back then, but I saw it. And then we'll talk about how he got submerged. So he's going to lead off. Then Kevin Shelton's going to go next with his efforts to try to get help uh, with what's going on with his situation that we uh, discussed last week. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of things, including that ridiculous ruling uh, we're going, to about, uh, we're going to congratulate Luna Reyna for her work and how uh, her story just didn't get any traction, even though she wrote an amazing story about the cannabis industry, part one of two. And she works for Crosscut now. Her first story was with uh, South Seattle uh, Emerald, uh, Herald, uh, South Seattle Emerald. So, and then uh, I'm going to talk about the decision last week where that Judge Ramsayer tried to protect Jenny Durkin and tried to give me a precatory warning about what I was doing with my uh, uh, video from the from the court hearing uh, in a public information lawsuit, uh, as well as her ruling that private individuals can't shoot video in court, which is wrong, and that they can't make money from it, which is also wrong. Uh, and she cited no constitutional law, nothing in her ruling. So we'll get into that too. So anyway, uh, let's start off with, with Kevin. Are you there though, brother? Kevin? He's like the star of the show. <laughs> Mike He's Shack, eating. I'm Kevin. He's eating. <laughs> uh. All right, Kevin, are you eating too? So look look at the bottom of the screen. Like it should, you know, that you got the, the um, you know, uh, on the bottom there, st start video. It should, it should have that down at the bottom. Yep. Join video, join auto or uh, audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were here last time. He was on his phone last time. I wonder uh, if. Uh... True, true, true. You see it, brother? There you go. All right. There we go. All right. Sorry. Sorry, guys. No, you're I'm, all I'm good. Not real tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think any of us are here. I'm, I'm not either. I just know how to edit video. I'm horrible. I can't. Uh, my TV, nothing. I can't do none of that. I have to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. so, I'm, I'm, I've had the same cell phone since 2016, and I'm just now learning how to, you know, really navigate it and use it. Right. Understood. I remember I used to work in the industry. I had one of the first, the first Nokia's. I think I have it somewhere out in the garage. It's really small. It's like a size of a playing card. And I could get internet on it back in 2001. Uh -huh. and, and I was on the elevator going to a, a meeting um, in Texas. And, and I was like, let me put my email. And they looked at me and they're like, dude, are you high? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I might be, but I'm also going to check my email. <laughs> yeah, it blew their minds. And it was like really rudimentary back then. But anyway, guys, the theme of the day is um, I usually like to dress up for this stuff, but today I've gone, oh. Pepper, you need to quit it. I've gone kind of sporting in nature, um, casual sporting, because we want to see if we have a sporting chance of being heard. Got it. There you go. <laughs> Grown. <laughs> oh. All right. Bad dad back. joke. The yeah, only dad that's joke. a total dad joke, man. Come on. You're too hey. young for dad jokes. There is no such thing as a funny constitutional joke, though. <laughs> show me one, you know. As good as it gets. So, Mr. Novak, please take the floor. All right. Well, my name's John Novak, and I've been a cannabis patient. Uh, basically since 98, but I uh, got my first authorization in uh, 2002 from the University of Washington doctor. Uh, and everything pretty much went, went okay for uh, about 
uh, eight years or so. And then uh, I was raided over in Eastern Washington by a large uh, drug task force team. Um, went through two years of court and they finally dismissed the case after I was able to successfully lobby the uh, legislators and they changed the law, basically making sure that it was legal, pretty much everything that I did. So at that point, the court really had no choice but to dismiss the case. Uh, and then after that, we moved over here to the Seattle area again. Uh, I was from here, but and um, started uh, hanging out with uh, uh, the group called the Cannabis Action Coalition, which was made up of basically myself, uh, Arthur West, Steve Sarich, John Worthington, and a bunch of other like that. And uh, we were also uh, part of the uh, No on I-502 and not that we were against legalization, but we saw it as a, uh, a way for the commercial market to come in and basically take over and uh, eliminate the medical market, which is ex pretty much exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but during the, uh, the I-502, uh, just before they actually uh, licensed anyone, the uh, Liquor and Cannabis Board went around the state and put on uh, some public hearings, uh, like... Spokane, Wenatchee, uh, Seattle, I think they did one in Vancouver, I think Bellingham maybe, but so they were going through uh, their rules making process and uh, Arthur West started uh, asking for the uh, public records all around that. And uh, so I followed suit and filed my own on the same stuff. But uh, then Arthur took them to court saying that it was incomplete and uh, Sure enough, uh, he got a ruling from uh, the judges basically stating that, uh, well, he, he actually lost uh, the case. on. Oh, it wasn't for public records. That's right. He was going to after him on the uh, Open Public Meetings Act. Right, right. And right. the case was actually dismissed. But in the uh, ruling, the judge stated that the uh, Liquor Control Board had violated the Open Public Meetings Act 17 different times. Yep. And uh, they eventually paid him off with about a hundred and ninety nine thousand uh, dollar settlement, mm -hmm. and uh, he walked away from that. So, but it was uh, at that time when we first started getting those documents, and I started seeing some of the other public records that some of the uh, some of the other um, people from that group were getting. And I said, "You guys, we need to put together a website, kind of like a WikiLeaks for uh, Washington State uh, cannabis stuff." So. That was the uh, the inspiration behind the website. And basically, since then, I've been doing all kinds of public records requests to all the different state agencies, a couple of different federal ones uh, for different records and stuff. And basically, I've been posting those on our, on our database. And the 420leaks.com is the uh, kind of like our blog where we uh, give our take on it. But um, anybody can access the public records and start to see it's a little uh, disjointed and all kinds of uh, records up there, but, uh, but it's all up there. And uh, for, let's see. So that was uh, 2013. We started that. And, and by the uh, way, that's when I moved here, 2012, 13, I rode a bike here from uh, Boston area. And when I got here, I remember seeing your stuff, like, you know, like the stranger, all these other like periodicals, the so-called progressive press, they would link right. to you all the time. I saw yeah. it. Please continue. The first few years, yeah, they were, we were, we build ourselves both, you know, as a, as a public a resource, but we were also doing it and uh, for the, uh, for the local press. Yep. And like you said, a lot of the uh, different press um, actually uh, used uh, our materials and, and quoted it and gave me the, uh, you know, links back to me. I was uh, interviewed a few times on different um, topics. Like uh, one time the, uh, I'd asked for, it was around 2015 when uh, medical cannabis uh, shops were closed down to favor the, the I-502. Mm -hmm. And they were stating that they were gonna allow uh, the medical uh, shops to basically get licensed under I-502. And uh, it was probably 2016 or so I started hearing from different people saying that they were getting screwed out of their licenses. So some of them there were, uh, were my friends. So I just decided that I was going to ask for the uh, public records around that to just, you know, to see if there was anything there. And uh, they accidentally released 
all kinds of things that they weren't supposed to on uh, these various different license applications, uh, exposing social security numbers, banking information, uh, just all uh, criminal backgrounds, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it, it became a pretty big uh, story in the press. Uh, even uh, through the application process, they actually left open links on some of the documents. And uh, so I was able to contact uh, the news, like I said, and they, uh, they, they uh, lots of stories around that made national news. Uh, but one of the things that the Liquor Control Board was trying to do was to blame the, uh, uh, the company called DocuSign, who uh, the people were, um, when they were filing their applications, they would use the DocuSign to submit all their materials. Right. And I actually got uh, messages from uh, people at, within DocuSign asking me what the heck was going on. Yep. Uh, because they were being blamed for this. And it turns out uh, the Liquor Control Board didn't train their people to uh, put the little checkbox to make sure that nobody from the outside could get it. So mm. eventually they, uh, the Liquor Board uh, came forward and said, yeah, it was, it was our screw up. But uh, it was not too long after that, uh, say 2017, I started to realize that some of the stories that I was putting up there were no longer getting covered. I wasn't getting any callbacks, uh, but I noticed that uh, the Seattle Times of all places were using a couple of the stories that I put up, but they would not give me any credit. And uh, after that, pretty much all the local press just stopped contacting me about any of it more. And I've just had a hell of a time trying to get the anything that we've been talking about here and other places out to the public. Yeah. And uh, it really was... Uh, yeah, it really wasn't until Luna Reina from the, I can't remember the name of the, the place she was working at. South Seattle she, Emerald. Now she's with Crosscut. She finally uh, used a lot of the, uh, the documentation from WikiLeaks. I mean, from the uh, 420 Leaks uh, database. There was another group, uh, the Government uh, Accountability Institute or something like that. I can't remember the name of them. Yep. And they actually used yeah, they uh, credited me with a lot of different, uh, a lot of different research that we had done, but other than that, uh, I've, it's just been silence ever since. So that that's pretty much the story as it stands right about now. Yeah, and as far just as four twenty leaks. Yeah, before we move on uh, to to Kevin, I will share this with you, uh, beloved. Uh, there is a national writer that got a Studs Turkle Award. I don't know if you guys know who Studs and Ida Turkle are, but they were my idols along with. Uh, uh, Mike Royko, uh, satiric journalist from uh, Chicago. They were my idols in, when I was in journalism before law, right? So Studs Terkel and his wife, anyway, he got the, the gentleman uh, worked for, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the paper. But anyway, he featured me in a story about the mortgages and all the, the mortgage fraud that was going on because I used to run a title company and then, you know, in the early double odds. And then I found out that... Uh, the whole thing was fraudulent later on and what they did with the mortgages. And so anyway, so he actually included me in a story that was, uh, you know, I posted it before it's in the, it's in the video from last week. And, uh, and so that was amazing that he did that. So anyway, along the, along the same time, I invited uh, a Seattle uh, stranger writer named Ansel hers to a mortgage summit hearing that I had with Seattle city council. Right when I moved here in 2013, 14, I invited him to be a co-host. He and I co-hosted this forum with Seattle counter candidates. I was actually making videos for Shama Shawant. They're still on my face, a YouTube channel, right? So and I'm an, I was, by the way, I was an internet video pioneer. Before there was a YouTube, I was putting videos up on, on, on the internet. Okay. So anyway, um, after that occasion, somebody got to Ansel Hers and the um, and they never after that point, after he co-hosted that mortgage summit with me, mm -hmm. I couldn't hear boo back from them. And keep in mind, I worked for one of the first alternative press ever. Like you had the Chicago Reader back in the 80s. I worked for the Cleveland Edition. And the Cleveland Edition was like made with money from Bill Gunlock's uh, trust fund. Uh, his father, the, the, the Supreme Court sits on those Gunlock chairs, the big, you know, the big wooden chairs with the springs. So mm -hmm. the inheritance. He didn't buy a Ferrari. He, he, he built a newspaper in Cleveland in the 80s. And I worked there. You know, and then I worked for the Ohio Call and Post, the only statewide black newspaper ever in the country, pretty much. 
you know, and then I work for the Indianapolis Star. But just, just sharing that with you, I have a journalistic and legal background that people should be interested in. And they were initially. Please continue. You have the floor now, Kevin. All right. <clears throat> so uh, should we just start back from where we left off or start all over? No, we're good. We, we start back from where you left off, wherever you feel comfortable, brother. It's your floor. Okay. All right. So my name is Kevin Shelton, and um, I, I started Life Tree Incorporated along with my brother, Ben, uh, who's my business partner. Um, we started back in uh, 2011. Um, actually, we started in about 2010, but we didn't get licensed and, you know, um, everything until about 2011. Anyway, we ran our business uh, low key under Initiative 692, uh, the Medical Use of Marijuana Act. We ran inside of that uh, legal framework. No problems from any uh, local or state authorities. Um, never any warnings. Uh, we actually cleaned up a neighborhood that was considered once the murder capital of Seattle. Yeah. Um, so um, fast forward it to about 2015, we start getting cease and desist letters. Uh, we never got a lottery letter. Um, we never got any type of uh, anything, you know, letting us know that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we were in some kind of wrong standing or anything until after the 502 was, was voted in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got visited a few times by agents. They had um, what we thought were real badges uh, at the time, but, <laughs> you know, we know now that they're, that they don't have law enforcement basic academy training or licenses. And uh, by the way, I know, filed your affidavit in federal court yesterday. Oh, right on. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Please continue. Um, so um, we started uh, getting these letters that we needed to shut down um, by July 1st of 2016. So uh, we decided to go ahead, you know, and close our doors that June. Um, under the threat of arrest and coercion and uh, the fear of um, force of arms in prison. And, and, you know, another, you know, trick that they used against us was uh, they said we would be, you know, liable for hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of taxes. And we never got a bill from the Department of Revenue. We never, and you know, until, you know, we never heard anything about ta taxes until it was time for them to shut everybody down and take it over themselves. And we never got, we never heard anything, you know, uh, after about taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, we stayed in the um, in the background and kind of stayed in the shadow, stayed out of the way. Uh, the threats, uh, you know, were and the guns and, and badges were enough to keep us away. Um, fast forward now um, to 2020. Mm -hmm. Well, and be before we get there. Okay. Uh, right before we get there, in between that time, and this is where we got cut off last week, I think, I okay. started talking about the 10 legislators who wrote that letter, like to Inslee and everybody, similar to what the NAACP wrote, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on your behalf, which yeah. hasn't been followed up on yet. We'll talk, continue on with that in a minute. But yeah, so so the 10 statesmen, states, God, I'm such a chauvinist. The 10 <laughs> states people, <laughs> I'm not a chauvinist. Anyway, <laughs> the, the, the 10 states people said, um, y'all need to get it together because you're abusive and you have a hostile environment, all these things, and they question your authority, blah, 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 blah. But it looks like they're all blowhards because I, I, Novak and I and other people have written them since then to say, what are you doing since then? You know, why can't we get our voice heard, which is the theme of this show again? Why can't, why, why have you stopped articulating a legitimate position that you took on prior occasion? Mm -hmm. yep. No, I wasn't a trial attorney. Right. <laughs> I don't make any sense. <laughs> anyway, please continue. So, um, you know, we um, closed our doors back in um, June of 2016 and uh, decided to just drop off the map and you know, fly under the radar. Um, so in about June of... Uh, 2020, if I'm not mistaken, it could have been a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. We, I got a call from a family member who I'll, I won't name right now, but I got a call from a family member and said, hey, didn't you and your brother get forced um, closure out of your shop? Uh, yeah, we did. Did you guys have any types of uh, penalties or anything? Nope, we didn't have any penalties. We were just asked to close um, 
so that they could uh, corner the market. They were just killing all their competition. And um, so th that was the end of that conversation. About a month later, I got another call from the family member and the family member uh, said, hey, look, I got a way you guys can get your license back. And I said, okay, I'll listen. Okay, I got a, a buddy of mine, um, Nate, and uh, he's good friends with Ollie Garrett, and uh, we can get you guys your license back. I'm showing sure okay. your affidavit now, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said, okay, you know that 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 sounds like you know uh, a pretty a pretty good plan. So mm -hmm. uh, we meet up and uh, we uh, talk about it, and um, there was. Uh, um, not a real uh, discussion of the details on that occasion, but uh, we definitely, um, you know, talked about getting the license back. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward into uh, the nuts and bolts. So I got a call uh, from a gentleman named uh, Nate Miles, and uh, he said that, um, you know, uh, that he worked with Ollie and that uh, he can get us our license back. And I said, okay. Um, what does that entail? He said, you don't know what it entails? I said, uh, no, fill me in. He's, you know, see, kind of jokingly said, oh, okay, you know what it entails. I said, oh, we'll have to give up some equity. He said, that's right, Kevin. You're going to have to give up some equity. And uh, so I said, okay, well, I guess we, we were out of hundreds of thousands of dollars in our business and everything else. So, I mean, I'm thinking, what do I have to lose? So I called my business partner and my brother and uh, filled him in on the situation. And, um, you know, um, he said, okay, let's just try it out and see what happens. You know, we got nothing else to lose. So we just let it marinate and we were supposed to have another conversation uh, with uh, Nate. And uh, then the next thing I know, um, about a few months later, got a call back from the family member that said it's, it's too many hands in the pot and Nate and Ollie don't want to do it. Um, and you know, because, who's Ollie again uh, for, the, for the viewers? Who is Ollie? Ollie Garrett from the Liquor Control Board. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and there's you know there's a couple of more people involved that I can't name right now, but they're also considered community leaders. And one one of them owns a huge uh, newspaper and some radio stations, and he's closely connected to my wife's family. So um, the rabbit hole is deep Very. it's stacked it's stacked deep it is and it's that's why we've got some, and that's why we got some people working on this from from outside of this uh, little cesspool here we have it in, in the uh pnw in seattle area and oh by the way i forgot to mention if you notice in the headline uh, or in the, the title of this uh it, it refers to ben bajikian B A G D K I I N or whatever. Uh, in the eighties, he wrote the media monopoly, and then he updated it in the nineties, the new media monopoly. He has not updated it since. I, he may have passed, I, but anyway, it just talked about how you know it was back in the day when GE bought NBC, I think it was, and all that stuff, and how you know we, we have again the media monopoly, and so now we have these these, these white boys in Silicon Valley, like you know I and I have sixty five hundred subscribers on, on YouTube and I get like 20 hits because they, they, they've taken this thing, they call it uh, a private thing. But in my lawsuit against Facebook, I showed where shopping malls, you know, if you create a private place that is uh, consonant with first amendment uses, all right, which is what the case was about. Um, it was called, uh, Ledyard cheap. I can't remember the name anyway. But if you do that, and people use your private forum consonant with First Amendment purposes, then you are liable for the. You have a First Amendment obligation not to discriminate between people using that 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 area. Okay, Prune Yard. Prune Yard is the shopping mall. That's the name of the case. And Prune Yard is in the Ninth Circuit, mind you. Okay. But in my federal lawsuit against Facebook, the court found a way to just totally ignore that case. All right. And it's just, it, you know, so basically you have these, 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 these private entities serving a public utility function. They are the new, they are the new public town square. And just, they have these rules and regulations that they put into play. But when they decide they want to yank you, they'll just yank you and you have no real recourse. Okay. 
And that is just something that we knew it was going to happen back when we were, uh, when YouTube got invented and, I, and, and, and my filmmakers, these are some progressive white boys back in, in Boston. All right. They were like on the cutting edge of progressive uh, video, alternative video back then. None of this bullshit, like Antifa shit. All right. These guys were real shit. All right. And no, no violence, no nothing. Just use your brain. Okay. And they told us, they were, we all knew this was going to happen. And now 20 years later, it happened. And, and, and we can't get our voice out. So before we, before I go on to more of my stuff, Kevin, a detail for us, your efforts to get your voice out. I understand you've approached the NAACP. Where does all that stand, please? Um, I haven't, to date, um, I haven't gotten a uh, response back, um, but um, I'm, I'm still pretty, um, you know, hopeful. Um, mm -hmm. I talked to um, the uh, Western Region President, um, President Hankerson, um, this summer. Gerald, and, Gerald uh, Hankerson, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, a wrongfully, yeah. a wrongfully imprisoned man, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, right? Absolutely. He spent 22 years. Yeah, well, Ann Cont yeah, yeah Ann Contanelli and I have worked on a case, as I noted in that, that, that uh, the uh, email to y'all and to uh, President Hankerson, you know, we worked on a case that a gentleman in Boston area spent 32 years wrongfully convicted. He was convicted in 85, two years before Hankerson was. Mm. So we're, we're, we're here, we're ready to help. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so I haven't gotten a response back, but, you know, I'm not, I sh I'm sure I'm not the only, you know, uh, you know, person that, uh, you know, that uh, needs some attention right now. So I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that, um, you know, things, uh, you know, will go in the right way because we definitely, we definitely have to have some, um, you know, legal reinforcement because, you know, man, these, a lot of these independent, you know, lawyers, they're afraid for some reason, man. Yeah, well, what they you don't want no. Why don't you recount for us uh, before we, uh, before I wrap up with my experiences, um, why don't you recount for us what your lawyer told you and, and, and tell us what your lawyer does and then what happened when you talked about the uh, grandfather clause. For once in America, folks, the grandfather clause should have helped black folks, but it didn't. Talk about that for a minute before we move, move ahead. Absolutely. I, I was told um, by the former lawyer uh, working on the case um, that um, the cannabis board is, uh, you know, um, like kind of stalling everybody out to get to the end to get to the end of the uh you know time period for the uh grandfather clause to expire and, and there was um one that's uh grandfathering in business but there's another one called leading organized crime which is like a rico uh statute stateside those, rico. yes yes stateside rico so um i was told that uh you know by 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 my uh former attorney that he told me in these exact words, I'm not going to do it because if I win a lawsuit against the against the liquor cannabis board on your behalf, they're going to come after me, Kevin. They're not coming after you. And he said it just like that. And he may have, he may have been a little bit more intense than that. But, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so, I mean, you know, man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's. Go ahead, Ann. You have a question. I'm sorry. So before we before we move on, I, I have a couple of questions, um, if that's okay. So um, uh, the first is um, I've heard statistics mentioned before and after. So I know Chris, you've mentioned statistics, um, something to the to the to the tune of like 25 percent were black owned before. The, the these it seems like it was a, a number of things right there was uh, sort of a U.S. Attorney's Office going in and doing kind of um, sweeps and shutting down um, certain facilities and then of course there's sort of almost phase two which is the liquor and cannabis board uh, coming up with these th this new licensing and mm -hmm. uh, not allow you know not honoring grandfather clause. Um, that the, I've heard statistics something to the tune of 25% were black owned and then afterwards uh, now it's it's maybe 1%. Is there is there a place that I can get a hold of these actual statistics? Where are you getting this from? Uh, Novak, doesn't John have that? Uh, I 
I don't Jim, have the Jim, statistics, Jim, but Jim, I Jim, Jim McRae. Yeah, I might be able to get it through him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would. I'd really love to get like the actual stats on that because yep. that's you know that's that's telling. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, I had one question about the grandfather clause. I can't pull it up because with you sharing your screen, for some reason, I can't get to anything. But I oh wait, it just happened. Hold on, okay. where am I? Ah. We got, uh, we got we got eight and a half minutes left. I'm only, I'm only going to take two minutes. So take another five minutes and then. We'll okay. Call. You know, I just had one question because when I was looking through um, the, the link that you had sent with regard to um, the grandfather father clause with regard to the, I guess it was the medical and healthcare industry. There were two things that I felt that the, um, the cannabis, the medical marijuana would fall under. One was naturopathy. And the other one was um, just medicine. It was like a clause that was just, it was so broad. It was crazy. And I just wanted to clarify, do you know, Chris, which one it would have fallen under? Uh, that's better addressed to Kevin, I think. It would better, it would fall under uh, natural medicine, naturopathic. Naturopathy, that's what I thought. But yeah, I that's me to me too, but I didn't want to say it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it will it will fall better under under that category. Okay, all right. Let cool. thy let thy let thine food be thine medicine, right? <laughs> well, there were two. It was really really interesting because there were two that it could fall under, um, and so I, um, yeah. So I just I wasn't sure which one it was, um, but I didn't know if if you knew. And, and then just one other thing that I wanted to say is, you know, if, if you're looking at racketeering, which, you know, I think it should be looked at. Um, oh, that, go ahead. Yeah. If you're looking at racketeering, um, then I think um, we have to like figure out the difference between incompetency and racketeering, because that's what we're going to be up against. Right. So if you're kind of saying like the, the story, um, about them not checking something on the form. Um, and so then all this private information going to people who it shouldn't have gone to and DocuServe being like, hey, it wasn't us. They could right. argue incompetency there. You know, They could say, well, that's ind indicative of the fact that this wasn't any kind of deep level corruption or you know well, and that's always that's always going to be their angle okay and that's where you come in with statistics you come in with uh, insiders from the agency remember we already have people who uh i took the t uh, deposition testimony of agent john jung other people have been on my uh, youtube feeds i haven't sent you yet right. i want to inundate you insiders have said that this is a racist organization uh right. it, 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 the NAACP said it in their letter J president hankerson said it too so you have a wealth of information that could be used by a lawyer. And keep in mind, I've never been licensed. I haven't been licensed in 20 years. I never went back after they screwed me. Um, although I could, but even if I could, I'm still one dude. All right, what can I do as one dude? We need other people who can help out. I, I don't right, yeah, out. no, I just wanted no. to put it forth in this, in this oh, yeah. recording, oh, because if that's the only thing being brought up, it could, I just wanted to put forth that like, don't just look at that because if you just look at that, if you just, you know, the, the, the you could easily say, well, that's just incompetency, right? Well, you know, when, when, you when know the what bigger story that? is racketeering, really. you know what I say to that? You have <laughs> hold on, hold on. There's a thing called brides in a bathtub. All right, it's a criminal What's that? brides okay. in a bathtub. All right, the criminal defendant says. Oh God, you know, my wife, she slipped and fell. God, you know, I had just recently taken out a million dollar life insurance policy on her and oh my goodness. And then you look at the background and there's another wife that died mysteriously, okay? And that's a criminal concept, but it still applies civilly. It's like, and the RICO thing is a quasi criminal statute, but it's civil, the state RICO. But it's the same thing. Like how many times can the puppy eat your homework? Yeah. Well, the other thing is I have documentation from uh, a couple different agencies where they pretty much spelled out where, how they were going to take down uh, the medical side. Yeah, and you- Oh, have, uh, oh, really? And, yeah, and, yeah. And I, I sent you the the affidavit of Frank Giese, uh, our expert witness, who was the guy, he had one of the first medicals here, and he knew that, remember, that the reason they, this whole thing happened is because A, WAMU collapsed with the, with the mortgage crisis, and WAMU was out here. I used to write like mortgages for them that took a whole lot out of the, the state 
and then they sold the, the um, liquor stores. So it gave yeah. them a chunk of money um, to invest in policing for can for medical, but they had no residual income. So yeah. at that time, that's when they needed recreational cannabis. Yeah, yeah. yeah and don't, was, don't I, you're not don't try. And, I'm I'm not. D don't try and convince me. What I am saying. Oh no no is, no! I know I'm not. Yeah, I'm just saying for the purposes of if people are watching this and they haven't and they're on they don't know. They don't know the story other than this, that, yeah. you know, I don't want people to get confused and, and think, oh, well, it could just be incompetency. Right. And that's that, why I that we're that. really looking at deeper level corruption and racketeering. Exactly. Um, we're at, on the same, same page. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same page. Anyway, guys, I got three minutes. I want to show you ahead. real quickly what happened when I actually, what well, we knew a couple of weeks ago when I had uh, challenged uh, Jenny Durkin, I sued her because uh, Brian Corbray and Aaron Barfield and I written in and tried to get a meeting with them. We got ignored. And then, so I go to court and, and Durkin never had to say anything. And, but the bigger issue is what the court tried to do to me on the first amendment level. You know, I, the law is complex, but generally there's a case called Citizens United. And there's also a case out here, uh, Obsidian versus Crystal Cox which is a Ninth Circuit case. Crystal Cox is a blogger. She was actually defaming someone, but she still maintained her First Amendment rights as a journalist. It's, I've never defamed anybody. I've helped people win defamation lawsuits, as, as, as Ann knows. So the thing, what this judge did in this thing, in this order, she gave an oral order uh, December 3rd or so saying that I can't use this video for anything other than educational purposes and I can't make money off of it. And, and I can't harass Jenny Durkin. You don't need to tell me my First Amendment rights as a journalist. I know what, the, what they are. The, the system is trying to protect itself. And, and then she also said, without going through the whole thing, because we got a minute and a half left, she also said that um, you know, there was no constitutional analysis in her ruling. And she tried to imply that, uh, the, that uh, the Code of Judicial Conduct, Canon 1, Rule 1.3 applied, that a, a judge can't help a private citizen make money from courtroom video. That's all poppycock. Any individual who has a right to shoot video in a courtroom can make money off of it. And, 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 and GR 16 is the rule here in Washington. Even though I am a professional journalist, a trained journalist, it doesn't matter anymore as long as you conduct yourself professionally, which I always do. Uh, even though we've seen white lawyers attack me and get no punishment, you know, while I'm running video, what, th th this is part of the whole thing. This is the internet mafia. This is part of the whole problem. And that's why we need entities like the NAACP to come forward. We've got like less than a minute left, guys. If, uh, if you want uh, to see some of those documents I was just talking about, Send me an email to 420leaks at gmail.com. The number is 420leaks at gmail.com. Just send me a quick email saying, hey, do you got those documents? And I'll send them, I'll send them over to you. That sounds great. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you all for coming on. Kevin, stay strong, brother. We'll try to get you some help and we'll try Thank to work you. on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin. You know. Thank you guys. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, this is my hemp. Uh, hemp distillate, by the way, tasty. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> to motorcycles tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Ciao, guys. Love you.